Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that wherever and whenever you listen to this recording, that you are able to look yourself in the mirror and be pleased with what you see when you realize that your skin is changing. Not only are we becoming crystalline based (laughs) from carbon, we are changing our skin tone and color is changing. I just looked in the mirror a few minutes ago and I realized that I look, um, I don't know, like my skin has like a porcelain like complexion. I'm in the quote-unquote pink of health. My skin under my fingernails is looking pretty pink. My, My arms, my skin, just I don't know why I look suddenly so healthy. I do know that I slept almost all day long again. In fact, I only woke up because I was having an asthma attack. So I am surprised that I look as healthy as I do. I half expected my fingernails to be blue and that I might have pneumonia again. So I asked my higher guidance and the entire collective whole. Our skin is currently being worked on as well as our lungs. For whatever that's worth, there you go. I was told that when my lungs take on their full-fledged crystalline form, I will not have the asthma or the struggles that I had before with breathing because it's a higher octave of our DNA and it does not need to be filled with struggles because struggles belong to the 3D world. Oh boy, I look forward to that. (laughs) I really look forward to that one. That's going to be awesome, right? I'm wondering about the metal rods in my legs, though, in my leg. When I broke my ankle, I got four metal rods put in. It's a hard, hard thing every single day of my life. It's hard to walk. It hurts. The metal pieces expand or contract depending on the weather, (laughs) depending on um, whether or not I've drank too much water or not enough, or what foods I've eaten, what foods I should have eaten and didn't. It's all a struggle. It's all a struggle. I have had uh, joint problems with my knees quite a bit lately. Going up and down stairs has been a big chore. and in my ankles. So, I don't know. I'm going to bring up a couple things tonight, later in the second half of the show, because tonight's topic are foods that look like the body parts they were put on earth to help. This is a weird one, but it's also a remarkable one. You might have already heard this. This idea was new-ish about almost about 20 years ago was when I first heard about it and I thought well this is weird (laughs) this has just got to be a load of crap because (laughs) it doesn't make any sense but then the more I looked into it the more sense it made you don't even need to know how to read to know what's good for you If you have eyes to see and a brain to think and you're wise, you just look at the food and go, I wonder what that's good for. What does it look like in my body? And if you figure that out, you'll know what it's good for. This is, of course, in relationship to fruits, vegetables, and nuts, things that are, you know, natural, not... (laughs) Ooh, a wedding cake. Looks like my spine. Must be good for my spine. Sorry. 
<laughs> Even though your husband might got your back. <laughs> uh, it's probably not what wedding cake is good for. It's probably not really good for you at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's just good for a memory. Not much else. But I did want to say that we have had a massive amount of energy coming our way. Just wave after wave after wave. Yesterday, I did notice there was a lot of pink coming our way. A lot of um, really super high vibrational pink. It's almost a peachy color pink. And we've had the red coming in, but it's a different color red than what we're used to. It's like a, a very high spectrum, like ultraviolet frequency red that is very cheerful, very happy. I have a feeling it's here to help cleanse and change and fix our blood. I have a feeling that the pink is to fix our our skin and our mental health, especially when it comes to love, to be a soothing balm for past memories that hurt. Man, it's just weird feelings I get. <laughs> It rained all day long, so I slept most of the day. (sighs) Which is the sounds of the rain. I woke up in a lot of pain, so I don't think the rainstorms are over. The arthritis is still acting up. I am a weather witch. (laughs) Which I did mention before when I realized that's a thing. My father told me once... He says, oh, my joint, my joints are aching. My knees and my, my hands hurt. I'm like, why? And he goes, well, it's arthritis that only flares up when we're about to get a storm. And he was a roofer, and he would go into town and make sure he'd cover up all of his roofing jobs really good so they wouldn't get water in the roof, so they wouldn't get leaks. And people are always like, how do you know it's going to rain? They didn't predict it. And he's like, oh, I know. <laughs> My body knows. You know, and he told me that. I'm like, oh, man, because every time I got it, too. You know, looking back, it could have been empathy, except my father's been dead. And I've still had for 17 years um, <laughs> the ability to predict the weather with my joints in my body. <laughs> uh, I could always tell when we're going to get a storm. There's like uh there was a character in the Gilmore Girls, the neighbor played by Sally Struthers and they'd say, "Oh, her trick knee is acting up. We're definitely going to get rain." Everyone in the whole town and so, "Did you hear about her knee?" "Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to get a lot of rain." <laughs> it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Um, we had a 7.1 earthquake in, uh, California yesterday. I don't think that was the big one, but I do think it's possible. The big one will happen at some point, but it was kind of inland. It was inland, um, 150 miles Northeast of Los Angeles. It could have been a lot worse. The damage could have been a lot worse, although, Some people, I think, died. I'm not sure. I know that one person's house caught fire as a direct result of the earthquake. I don't know exactly. I didn't read the article on about how that happened exactly. It was a small town. Thank God it wasn't in Los Angeles direct. But I still feel bad for the people who had to suffer from that. You know, everything fell off the shelves. They were really scared. And the aftershocks keep coming and coming and coming and coming. And it's really uncomfortable. You just feel like the ground beneath your feet is no longer stable. If you can't even count on the ground beneath your feet, what can you rely on? People lose a lot of things at this time. Things are, you know... Attached to, I mean, I get attached to my coffee cups. This morning, my son decided to make tea in my favorite coffee cup from the Cuenca International Writers Conference that I had stashed in the very back of the cupboard where I keep the coffee cups that are mine, that I like. 
<laughs> like, why are you using that coffee cup? You just started laughing at me. You know, it's like, made me realize it's just like, it's so wrapped up in that weird possessiveness and the ownership of that coffee cup. Like it was expensive too. I think it was like $10, but it did go towards paying for the venue of the conference. So it was for a good cause. And I told him, I'm like, look, I, I only get that coffee cup out when I'm writing books or scripts. Like, you know, that's like kind of a sacred thing to me. And he just went, okay. You know, <laughs> like he wasn't being sarcastic. Actually, it was just kind of like, you know, like it's just, it's an inanimate object. Why are you so attached to it? It's like, I don't know. I just get attached to stuff in a weird way. <laughs> Because the cup's always there for me day and night. <laughs> when no one else is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to make fun of myself a little bit there. <laughs> now, why do we get attached to stuff we do, don't we? Ladies, do you know when you get attached to a purse and you've had it for like months, sometimes a year, and it's reliable, you know where everything is? Doesn't it really affect your psyche when like the zipper breaks or something happens and you can't use the purse anymore? I've had leather purses where the leather just like started peeling off and it looked horrible. And I'm like, I, I literally can't wear this anymore. It's ridiculous. It, but I, it, it's like to buy a new purse, you feel like you're cheating on the old purse. I, at least for me, I don't know. Is that, is that a thing that only I have? I just feel so guilty. Same thing with backpacks. Men can maybe relate to this with the backpack or the wallet thing. I've had boyfriends that had wallets for like 20 years. Oh, I've had this since I was a kid. Dude, you're, you're, you're 32. You've had this wallet since you were eight. First wallet I ever had. It's falling apart. It's put together with duct tape now. Can you get another wallet? How about if I buy you one for Christmas? Oh no, this is my lucky wallet. Why is it lucky? It was with me during this, this, and this. Yeah, because you've had it for 20 years. <laughs> it's so weird that we get attached to things, right? I mean, I still don't know if I'm getting deported next week. I don't think I will. I think they're really going to give it to me. I asked her, is this all the paperwork I need? And is everything okay? She said, yes, I think everything is okay. I will let you know. You could come in to pay for your visas like you know, when I write you and I don't know, I mean, <clears throat> maybe that's a test show how, mu how much you really want it. Keep coming in, come in next week. Okay. And then come in the following week. It's like, Oh my God. I, it's like, I've made three trips in three weeks. Next week will be my third trip in three weeks. It's a, it's the most trips I've had in a year and a half. <laughs> and it's not even for fun just to go sit in a government building the cool thing is though I mean I meet in a lot of Colombians and Venezuelans and the last time I went I met like four or five Ecuadorians that are going to be traveling outside of the country because they also have to go to the same office and the people I've met there are just the coolest people so sweet just so, so sweet. I mean, people, I don't really go out of my way to talk to people except for the Franciscan monk. I felt compelled to say hi. And now he's writing me every day. And he's a very sweet person. I have a feeling that we, we have a potential of being great friends, actually. It's cool. I've never been friends with a, a Franciscan monk before. I mean, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> but people talk to me and they ask me questions. You know, like last time I actually saw a gringo, I saw one, one person <laughs> who was from Europe, not one person from the U S but only one person. I think he said he was from the UK and he sounded like he had an Irish accent and he told me that he bought a little bit of land just outside of Quito and he and his family, they're just going to grow their own food and do their own thing in the middle of nowhere. We build a house and stuff. That's pretty cool. It's smart. I mean, I feel like it's a really nice, lovely, balanced country here. I like it a lot. 
I mean, there's a lot of crap going on here too that, <laughs> you know, they just broke down a town, an Australian mining company started a mine and they hadn't quite opened it yet. And the people in charge, I guess, went back to Australia and that's when all the criminals moved in. And in the past year, they built a town up and a thousand, more than a thousand people were living there and illegally mining out of this private property. They started the town, like a whole town. They had like a brothel (laughs) and they were doing sex trafficking and human trafficking. I think they had slave labor there. I mean, drugs, and there was murder, and obviously corruption, and 2,300 military and 1,700 police just went in to this little makeshift mining town that cropped up because someone had the idea to steal from somebody else, and anyway, just... It was over 3,000 troops went in, you know, total, including the police, and broke it up and arrested over 1,000 people just this last week here in Ecuador. You don't hear about this stuff often, so it's shocking when you do. Um, even though there, there's like, corruption everywhere. There's mafia and cartel and bad people <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but um, that was really bad. That one was like, what? Oh, the head scratcher. Speaking of bad people, um, Saudi Arabia is not filled with bad people, but the policymakers, i.e. the king, has, well, even though he's done some good things for female uh, human rights, women can drive. (laughs) It started off with they could ride their own bicycle. Wow, that was something. And now they can drive a car. That's something. But uh, five men have um, been executed for being homosexual in the past couple months. And Nicki Minaj has been begged by human rights groups not to perform there next month. I mean, besides the fact that she has to wear, she wears her crazy, like hardly any clothes. And I kind of feel like it's disrespectful to the women that have to wear a full, um, you know, the full headdress and the full I, uh, I, uh, I I know this word. Um, anyway, it's just like a dress. It covers every part of the body, you know? Like some Saudi Arabian women do show their face, usually only their eyes. And um, it's because it's out of respect for their families and their husbands. It's, it's a cultural thing. And... It's, I mean, it's throughout the whole Muslim world. I mean, it's like you don't want to wear tight form fitting clothes because you don't want to turn on your, your friend's wife or your neighbor, you know, your, or I mean, your, (laughs) or that too, (laughs) your friend's, your friend's husband, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's husband, whatever. You don't want other people to think the sexual thoughts about you because it breaks down the society. And when you think about it, It actually does make sense because if everybody's lusting after everybody else, you're not going to get a whole lot of work done and things become more corrupt and everything ends up. It's like, you know, people like Trump happen, you know, like it's okay to grab people by the, you know what? And, um, I've noticed that when I was wearing a hijab, which is the scarf that goes over the head and covers the hair completely, Even in California, when I was dressing like that, nobody treated me like a sex object anymore. It was like, it was like a magical veil. (laughs) And all of a sudden I became a human being. I was no longer a whoa, 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 woman. You know what I mean? Like I suddenly had respect everywhere I went, except for the haters that screamed at me and told me to go back to my own country, which was insane because I'm from California. But, but for the most part, it, it's like, it's literally like, a, it's like a magic scarf that leads you to the world in which you are respected as a human being. And you're not looked at for your body when you're covering your body, you're looked at for your mind. So I actually preferred wearing hijab. I actually enjoyed it because I liked being treated 
more like an equal, not like someone who can be pushed around or taken advantage of sexually. Because I get that all the time. I get that all the time, even now, even in my age, even being 50 years old. And, you know, I, I still get that from men. And I bet if I started to wear hijab, it wouldn't, I, I bet it would go right back to absolute mad respect. Like just kind of, and it's not even respect. It's more like it's not sexy. <laughs> and so men don't think of you like that because it doesn't come to mind because they keep wondering about what's on your head. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, not all men have treated me like that. And there are some really good men in the world that just look at you as a person and and um, not as a sex object or, you know, future wife. It's hard for me to find them. But I mean, <laughs> hey, I like her boobs. She'll make a great wife in the future. No, no, I'm not going to date you because you like whatever. Ah, oh, men. And then there's, then there's the surreptitious men. They think that they can say, I want to be your friend. <laughs> I know what that means. I mean, I haven't been, I haven't been born just yesterday. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I know what that means. I don't know. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. And then they go, well, I just want to be your friend, you know? And then it, it, it does two things. It, it puts you off guard. Like, Oh really? You want to only be my friend? Then why are you talking to me? Because I have a feeling that later down the line, you're going to ask me on a date or you'd be like, now that we're friends, we've developed a relationship. Now let's have, take it to the next level. (laughs) I mean, I don't mind when that's the approach guys have, as long as they don't say those words, but then it always puts me on edge. I don't know. Maybe I analyze stuff too much. Maybe I just, I see it coming. I know what it is. (laughs) I mean, you've seen one train. You always are going to know what a train looks like. (laughs) You've seen one car accident. You know what another one's going to look like. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. It's just... I always have this aversion to the majority of the men that talk to me just because... I know they're not the one. I know they're going to try to waste my time. You know, I appreciate when they do it in a respectful way, like the friendship approach, but I don't know. I'm not looking for a relationship. And so I think it makes me on edge. I'm looking for my one true love. I'm looking for my, my twin flame. And I know I telepath with him almost every day now. And I, I, I'm growing to love him now already. When we meet in person, I want to take it slowly again and grow to love him as a person first and, you know, not look at him like a va 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 boom. (laughs) You know, I want to be respectful and loving and get to know him and get to know all of his moods and all of his habits, whether they're good, bad, or ugly. And, you know, I just want to know everything. And why, why shouldn't we want to know that about our future loves for those of us that are single, you know, for those of us that are in a relationship, um, you know, what did it take to get there? You know, what, how did it, how did it work for you? I, I mean, am I just being really skeptical suddenly? <laughs> I'm like so terrified of having to deal with another narcissist that I'm just like, nope. <laughs> Can we be friends? No. <laughs> Someone just did that to me again in the past 48 hours. He says, oh, I want to be your friend. I'm like, that's cool. You know, friends are good. And then he just said, well, we could get to know each other and then see where life takes us, you know, in, the, in our future. If maybe we have a future together. Dude, you just told me you go to the church of Christ. Like Christ on a cracker. You know, that's not going to work out. You know, <laughs> A, I'm not a Christian. B, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I channel Jesus for my show. I channel Mother Mary and God for my show. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm pretty certain that church would consider that to be works of the devil. <laughs> I mean, know your audience before you say you want to have a future with somebody. Crazy, right? Crazy stuff. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't know. I've <laughs> oh my god. If you guys haven't seen Tales from the City, speaking of Christ on a cracker, <laughs> there's a scene. Oh my god. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but so crazy, crazy, crazy story about the Episcopalian church. <laughs> I had no idea that the Episcopalians were more Catholic than the Catholics themselves, according to this show. And I thought that was very weird. Now I feel like maybe I'll look into that because that's insane. I had no idea that they believe in transubstantiation too. I did not know that there's consubstantiation and transubstantiation. And what these words mean is when you are, for example, Lutheran or your average run-of-the-mill church that actually does Holy Communion. A lot of churches don't even do that, but most of them do. Um, Like the Lutherans, I call that the watered-down version of Catholicism, which is probably okay. Actually, it's very okay. Um, But it just wasn't for me. Uh... Consubstantiation is when you eat the uh, wafer that represents the body of Christ and you drink the uh, wine, the red wine that represents the blood of Christ um, and his sacrifice, that you are doing this literally in remembrance of him because he sacrificed his life, his body and his blood. He sacrificed so that people would understand I don't know that they even get what that was all about. And so people understand that we never freaking die because he came back three days later. You know, (laughs) we live forever. Our souls can never die, but no one seems to get that. They think that he took away the sins of the world. Well, if that was true, why are, why is there crime? Why was there a mass shooting in Chicago today? You know, I mean, like, he didn't do a very good freaking job if that's what he was trying to prove, what he was try- trying to do. And people don't even understand their own religion sometimes. It freaks me out. In all religions, I can't just say only Christianity. Some Christians do. My brother, for the most part, I think he gets it. He understands his religion deeply, and he gets upset when other people don't see the things he sees about it. You know, it's like I'm not a Christian, but in in many ways, I'm more Christian than a lot of the Christians I've met. I don't judge. I don't judge people. (laughs) That's like a big one. (laughs) You know, (laughs) so I don't know. It's a huge one. But um, yeah, so uh, consubstantiation is when you take the wafer and the wine and it and it's a representation it's a metaphor transubstantiation is when you believe that the moment that wafer touches your lips it literally becomes Jesus's physical body in your mouth and then you eat it and then you drink the wine it literally becomes his blood and you drink it I mean that's cannibalism dude that's gross totally gross but I didn't know that the Episcopalians, just like Catholics, believe in transubstantiation. That's interesting. I just learned that from watching Tales from the City with Olympia Dukakis and Laura Linney, who I adore. I adore her. I didn't know about this. I guess this was an original Showtime uh, series. And they have like only three or four episodes per Series And then two or three years later, they'll do two or three more. But the episodes are like an hour and a half long. Some of them are two and a half hours or two hours and 10 minutes. It's like a full movie. Every episode is like a full movie. And it's extremely interesting. It's about life in San Francisco in the 1970s and, and taught from the perspective of people that have, um, I don't know. They just like it's about a woman who comes from Ohio. She's very, very sheltered. So that's her thing. She's very, very sheltered. So she's constantly shocked. And then there's um, a man who comes from a very Christian background and his parents are very dead set against homosexuals, but he's homosexual. And then there's um, a woman who is in charge of all of it, but she's um, 
transgender and she passes and nobody understands that she's transgender until she tells her secret (laughs) because she's very good at dressing (laughs) and her operations were perfect and she and her hormone levels are good and she's always looking you know it's Olympia Dukakis she's like actually a woman so but she's playing a transgendered woman and so it talks about you know the, the the things that she had to go through um, went back when she was a he and back in the war with, you know, in France, um, World War II, supposedly, or something like that. It was just a very interesting show. So, I mean, that's my, my, my Netflix pick of the week. If, um, you guys are, <laughs> if you guys are uh, interested in what I'm doing with my time and I'm not thinking about the show, I'm always thinking about the show though. I mean, it takes me like three hours to get through an hour and a half show because I have to keep stopping and I keep thinking about ideas and you have to contact my higher guidance about different things and uh, then I have to stop and what's you know what's my twin flame doing? I gotta you know check in with him right now. I think he's partying right now. <laughs> I think he has some. He's hanging out with some friends. I'm like, don't do too many drugs. I want you healthy when we meet. <laughs> I'm not judging you. I just, I'm worried about, you know, doing too much. Okay. Of course, my, my of course, my twin, he's not going to be the perfect saintly, you know, person if I'm not. So pss, obviously he's going to be, he'll be hitting the bong every now and again, just like me. <laughs> I don't, honestly, I don't do it very often, but when I do, I, I kind of enjoy it anyway. Um, Schumann Residence today. Oh, I did say we're at 99 on the Ascension Symptoms Scale, yes? I slept a lot. I think my body, the more I sleep, the more my body transforms. I feel kind of strange right now. I mean, I did eat actually today, so it's not that. Had my coffee, I ate, had my hot jello tea, I did everything. That's why I'm recording this a little bit late, though, because I slept all day long. And then I did watch Tales of the City, probably several episodes more than I should have today. <laughs> Oh, I'm just hooked. I'm hooked on it. I love Olympia Dukakis. I always have. Anyway. All right. 1700 o'clock <laughs> UTC time on the Schumann Resonance. It says, this is, they only did the evening report. They said, the activity in the last 24 hours saw an isolated opening peak at 40 hertz at 2045 UTC yesterday followed by eight hours of calm before a period of nine hours of fairly significant activity began. The maximum peak was reached with 60 hertz at 1730 UTC time, although previously from 645 to 8 o'clock a.m. UTC time, the amplitude remained constantly above 47 hertz. So nine hours of big, big activity and 60 hertz was the top of that. That's awesome. All right. Today, Course in Miracles, Lesson 27. It's very simple. Above all else, I want to see. That's it. Above all else, I want to see. So... Later, part of it is vision has no cost to anyone. It can only bless. So it's worth it to read these lessons, acim.org, or download an app. For Course in Miracles, there's many, many out there. I can't recommend one over the other because all the lessons are the same. It's uh, excellent. It's an excellent course. If, if you haven't taken it, and if you have taken it, hopefully... This is giving you um, a good refresher. All right, guys, I'm going to be right back uh, after this message. Please let it play out while you run to go get your your lemonade and brownies or I don't know what you people do, but (laughs) go ahead and go do that. Maybe have some leftover fruit from your 4th of July. If you're in the United States, you're probably having, oh, watermelon and maybe blueberries and strawberries, pound cake with, oh, my God, I'm getting so hungry pound cake with the 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 whipped cream the cool whip oh my god or the ready whip ready whip is my favorite
<laughs> you hear that twin flame? Ready whip. Ready whip over cool whip every time. More natural. It's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be talking about food in a moment when we go over foods that look like the body parts they are meant to help. After this. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars, and oh wait, we're not doing that right now. (laughs) On Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one place for free and you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. Have you guys ever noticed that some foods look suspiciously like parts of your body? It's kind of freaky, right? (laughs) Well, today we're going to go over 21 nature-made foods that resemble body parts that they are made to help. So we're going to jump right in. I mean, this stuff, I I like wrote so many pages on this. I wrote two and a half pages on this, but it's so interesting. You're going to love it. This is going to be a longer one. Makes up for the last two days in which the show was a little shorter. (laughs) So anyway, um, we're going to jump right in and we're going to start with grapefruits and oranges. (laughs) Uh, a little bit to the lemons also are included in this, but they don't look like that. Well, they, they do look like some breasts. So yeah. Okay. Some women have breasts that look like lemons. Maybe they need lemons more. I don't know. Mine look like very large grapefruit, Texas style grapefruit. I'll have, you know, no, <laughs> Ruby red. <No. laughs> uh, we're going to have fun. Hey, hey, yoga. Okay. Grapefruits and oranges look like breasts. You could put them in your shirt, model them around like they're your breasts, even if you're a man. <laughs> my my little girl, back before she was a transgendered man, she <laughs> she put these oranges, these enormous oranges, in her little red velvet dress that she had for I think it was for her birthday. <clears throat> and she put those in her to make it look like she had boobs. And she says, Mommy, take a picture of me looking like you. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that's hilarious. So, of course, I did. And <clears throat> I lost the picture, but it is etched in my mind. It is one of the funniest things she ever did because she was always very serious. Now, he's not as serious. He's He's lightened up quite a bit, and he's actually super fun to be around but I could not believe my kids doing this four years old I was like no it was her fourth birthday she did that I was like oh my god that 
It was one that, and she had the, and she had them sticking up out of the top like my boobs do when I wear a shirt or a dress. I was like, oh my god, that is so funny. But how funny is that? That oranges and grapefruits are actually good for your breasts, ladies. Bioflavonoids, vitamin C, and limonoids all prevent breast cancer. Also. It will help to reduce your swelling in your breasts if you have swollen breasts. All citrus fruits, in fact, will do this. So that's like pretty interesting, right? It looks like what it helps. To the point of when you cut open um, a grapefruit or an orange, you can see the network of fibers and it looks very much like the network of fibers inside the human breast. Very interesting, right? The next food we're going to talk about is tomato. Tomatoes. Tomatoes, when you cut them open, look like they're they're outside. They're shaped like a heart. And then when you cut them open, they have chambers like a heart has the atriums and the ventricle, ventricles. So it's pretty interesting that a tomato looks like a heart. It looks like a heart. Tomatoes have lycopene, and this reduces heart disease risk. And if you eat tomatoes with olive oil, woo, Italian food, (laughs) or even with avocados in a salad, this will boost your lycopene absorption by 10 times. You have 10 times greater lycopene absorption if you eat it with a fat such as olive oil or avocado. So I thought that was like really interesting. (coughs) Now, celery is our next, next item on the list. Number three, celery. So number one was grapefruit. Number two was tomato. Number three is celery. (coughs) Excuse me. Celery looks like long bones. And indeed, it gives us bone strength. It is a good source of silicon, and silicon is what we use to build the strength in our bones. Now, bones and celery both have exactly 23% sodium. Do you think that's a coincidence? I think not. It's pretty interesting, right? How weird is that? Our bones have 23% sodium and celery has 23% sodium and celery looks like bones. It's so cool. And it's kind of obvious. It's kind of like the food guide for dummies, right? I mean, you just walk through a random, you know, vegetable garden or a fruit forest. I don't know. Is there a fruit forest in the world? No, but I mean, I think the Amazon rainforest, there's fruits growing everywhere just randomly, naturally. You just walk through and go, oh, well, that looks like this. That's probably good for that. <laughs> it's so easy. God makes life so easy and we just, we make it so hard for ourselves and we just like don't have the knowledge or don't think about it and it takes forever. How long has man been on the planet? And we, we just, this started becoming slightly known like 20 years ago. Maybe a little longer, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, I learned about 20 years ago, but I'm 50 years old. So what happened in the first 30 years of my life? How come when I was a kid, they didn't say, hey, celery is good for your bones. How do you know? Well, it looks like bones. Oh, yeah, okay. It just seems so obvious. I mean, once you know this stuff, it seems obvious. (laughs) It's so easy. Anyway, carrots. We all know what carrots are good for, right? For Now, it's not quite as obvious with carrots. You don't look at a carrot and go, boy, you have eyes just like carrots. (laughs) Hey, Betty, I love your eyes. They look just like carrots. Your eyes don't look like carrots. Oh, but wait. When you chop a carrot the short way, not the long way, you chop, you know, like, not like carrot sticks, but chop them into the rounds where there's like little circles and you hold it up and under the light, you'll see, you'll see a pupil and an iris and all of the fibers radiating outward and it looks just like an eyeball. That's really freaky, right? So it looks like the patterns of your eyes. So, I mean, from the pupil to the iris, it's all there inside a carrot. It's like a hidden secret. 
Now, now, uh, carrots do have vitamin A, C, B1, B2, B3, B6, B9, E, vitamin K, and choline, as well as beta carotenes. So they're one of the healthiest and minerals, and they're one of the healthiest vegetables you can eat. And they are good for eyes, and they do help with night blindness. They help with night blindness. It's pretty crazy, right? Now, they also have antioxidants. Carrots have antioxidants. And that was number four on the list. They help prevent vision loss, and they also decrease your chance of getting macular degeneration. It's like pretty cool, right? Now this one is fun. Oh, I love this one. Walnuts. Think about it. Walnuts. They look like a brain. And they help your brain function better. When you look at an um, a walnut, you'll see that there's two hemispheres. And there's even wrinkles. And the walnut comes encased in a hard shell just like our skulls. It is a well-known brain food. It has omega-3 fatty acids in it, and that supports brain function, and it slows down or prevents dementia, and it increases your memory. Another really freaking weird fact about walnuts is that they are 68% fat, and your brain is 68% fat. (laughs) <laughs> we're all fat heads. <laughs> if we're smart, we are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think everyone has the same. That 68% of our brains are fat and 68% of walnuts are fat. Exactly to the percentage. Isn't that freaking weird? Do, 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 do. It's so freaky. Now check this one out avocados <laughs> an avocado looks like a uterus with a baby in it that big seed that's growing inside the uterus it's like a baby inside a womb right so so freaky did you know that from the moment an avocado starts to grow till the moment it is ready to be picked is exactly nine months the same amount of time it takes to grow a baby. (laughs) I love this topic because it's so weird and it's so cool. It's spooky and also healthy all at once. So it's just a really strange topic. So (laughs) avocados help with the female reproductive system it keeps it in check. It is, they are field avocados are number six on the list, by the way, avocados, five was walnuts. So it helps with folic acid, it has folic acid or folate. And this helps to reduce the risk of cervical dysplasia, which is a precancerous condition. So basically you won't get cancer if you eat avocados all the time, not of the womb anyway. So, It also, the folic acid, helps to grow a baby if you're pregnant. It helps their brain, their heart, lungs, eyes grow. Folic acid is like the number one thing that you need when you are pregnant to help your baby grow, to grow its nervous system and everything. So you eat an avocado that looks like a uterus with a baby in it, it's going to help the baby in your uterus. Oh, it's so freaky. It's so freaky, right? Okay. Now, the next one is a little creepy. (laughs) Unless you're a vampire. (laughs) I think all vampires know this secret. Red wine. (laughs) Red wine looks like blood. (laughs) Guess what? Red wine is really good for your blood. (laughs) Who knew? (laughs) Red wine lowers your LDL cholesterol in your blood. 
and it helps you prevent heart disease. It also reduces blood clots because it has a blood thinning compound. This also helps to prevent strokes with the antioxidants, the polyphenols, and especially the, the special one only found in, raw, in red wine. Blah. It's Reservatrol. <laughs> only reserved for red wine. So, <laughs> red wine. Red wine. That's so cool, right? And it's so weird. In all those freaky vampire shows, they're always drinking wine. I mean, blood in a wine glass to make it look like wine. Ah! Or sometimes it is just wine. (laughs) There's a total connection there. It's so cool, right? Okay. The next one, when I first looked this up, I, I mean, I went all over the internet today for a while, like a couple hours looking up this stuff. So ginger, everyone says it looks like a stomach. The bigger part of ginger, if you get a big piece of ginger, it's a lot of times shaped like a stomach. Well, I had another idea of what it was, what it looks like. So we're going to go over that in a minute. Now ginger, it, the bigger part, a bigger, huge chunk of ginger can look like a stomach. That means it is great for stomach issues. It prevents nausea and stomach upset. It is very, very good for you. And it's good for digestion as well. Now, what I noticed is ginger sometimes looks like like gnarled up fingers. Like what happens when you have really bad out of control arthritis. So I looked it up and guess what? Ginger can prevent and alleviate pain and inflammation of arthritis. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so freaky, but I love this stuff. Okay. The next one is sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. This is a weird one. Now, sweet potatoes look like a pancreas. They are high in beta carotene, which is an antioxidant and vitamin A. And this prevents damage associated with, with cancer and aging, but get this. Your pancreas is directly related to diabetes. It shoots out insulin when you've eaten so that your blood sugar levels are, are great. But when you have diabetes, you don't have enough insulin. So your blood sugar gets out of control. Well, sweet potatoes look like a pancreas and they do help diabetes because they're very low on the glycemic index. <laughs> so they so literally they look like a pancreas which regulates blood sugar and sweet potatoes help regulate your blood sugar. Like whoa, right? This stuff is mind blowing to me. Now, I've said a few things about women and guys, I don't want you to feel left out. The next thing is Clams. <laughs> Clams look like testicles and they are great for men's reproductive health. They contain high amounts of folic acid and zinc and they will improve your semen quality. So if you want to be a father and also they do kind of, well, they're an aphrodisiac. <laughs> So they make you want to. (laughs) So they improve your semen quality and they make you want to have sex. So if you want to be a father, you might want to eat your clams maybe. And if you don't want to eat clams, I have another solution for this in a moment. Hold your horses. We'll get to it. So ginger was number eight. Red wine was seven. Sweet potatoes, nine. Clams were ten. Now we're coming up to number 11. This one is really cool. Now, grapes. <laughs> grapes literally are shaped like a bunch of grapes. A lot of times will look like a sh- the shape of lungs. Ooh, you got to turn that crow off. I thought I already turned that crow off. <laughs> Hold on a moment. Turning off the crow. Turning off the crow. <laughs> (laughs) 
<clears throat> All right. I don't even know if you guys heard that. <laughs> oh, no. It went to a whole nother thing, and I don't know. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so, okay. A bunch of grapes looks like lungs, like they're in the shape, general shape of lungs. But inside your lungs, you have these little things that look like grapes called alveoli. And the alveoli is the tiniest little part of the lungs that pull in the oxygen. So if you eat a lot of grapes, they will reduce your risk of lung cancer and emphysema because of the antioxidants that are in your body. It, like, it just, I mean, it helps. The, I mean, it has, uh, antioxidants are in the grapes. Oh my God. I should just delete that part out, but I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> All right. So risks of lung cancer and emphysema are reduced, but also the grape seeds themselves have a thing called proanthocyanidin, and this reduces asthma that's triggered by allergies. So I'm going to start eating more grapes. Number one. <laughs> It's pretty cool, right? Alveoli. It, grapes have um, well, all the things that wine have. Wine is more concentrated grapes, of course. But there's antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. And all of it helps you to breathe better and prevents diseases of the lungs, basically. Okay, number 12, we are up to figs. All right, men, this is your other one. <laughs> Figs are good for a scrotum, for your scrotum. Did you know that figs are full of seeds, just like (laughs) your scrotum, and they hang or grow in pairs. They grow in twos. I mean, it doesn't get more obvious than that, right? So what do figs do for men? Well, they increase your sperm count and increase sperm motility or mobility, both motility, mobility. And it, so it basically, it increases your ability to have children. It overcomes male sterility. That's what figs do. They're filled with B6 and also... They contain serotonin, which is the secret happiness hormone. Now, what do figs do for women? They, when you cut a fig open in the very center of the fig, it looks like a vagina. So figs are good for vaginal health. And what did I just say a minute ago? Oh, and also B6. When you're having problems with your period, B6 helps you release water excess water weight and I did say that they seek they also have the secret happiness hormone (laughs) figs have serotonin in them and what makes you happy sex (laughs) there's also an antidepressant in sperm so if you eat figs you're going to increase your motility of your sperm and the high quality of your sperm. You have a child from that. You're going to have a high quality kid. (laughs) And also you're going to make the person in your life happy because not only do the figs secrete or, or, well, you secrete, uh, if you're a man, you secrete the antidepressant qualities through your sperm as well as the figs that do that. So it's kind of cool. It's like it all kind of works together to make somebody very, very happy, (laughs) including yourself. So yay figs. (laughs) All right. So number 13 is kidney beans. What do they look like? (laughs) What are they called? 
<laughs> kidney beans are good for kidneys. Not only are they filled with fiber, like all beans are, they uh, get rid of the waste back up in your body and your system and they prevent constipation. That's the number one or number two thing that they do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Think about that. It's so funny. All right. But kidney beans are also an excellent source of needed minerals, including potassium and magnesium. And what it happens when you have excess potassium and magnesium, it takes the salt out of your cells and reduces your water weight. If you have water weight gain, so it releases excess water weight, which is good for your kidneys. It takes salt out, potassium, magnesium, take out salt, which is good for your kidneys because salt is not good for your kidneys. If you have too much salt in your diet, you need some, but not too much. And what does this do? All of this together, it prevents kidney stones. Eating kidney beans will prevent kidney stones. Ah, cool beans, man. That's so cool. Now it makes you wonder about black-eyed peas, if they help reduce the swelling in a black eye. I bet they do. <laughs> I bet they do. I didn't even look that one up, but now now it's got me thinking about some other foods. <laughs> All right, so number 14, this one's really, really freaking weird. I did not know this one. I had never heard or seen this before. I saw the picture. If you go to the internet, by the way, if you go to Google and you Google this stuff, you know, if you just look up food that looks like body parts, <laughs> well, you're going to get some really weird pictures of fruits that are freaky looking that just, you know, <laughs> radiation caused some weird looking stuff, but you'll, you'll find these charts and, and it's really weird. You're going to see the resemblance right away. You're going to see pictures of these foods and go, Oh my gosh, it looks exactly what, like what it's supposed to help. It's really, really weird. So, okay. Mushrooms is number 14. You know, just the garden variety mushroom is not the cool ones that, I like to take. I don't even like normal mushrooms. Probably there's a problem with uh, my hearing as a result because mushrooms, when you slice them from the from the uh, top, the mushroom cap down through the um, down through the uh, stem, and you turn them sideways, they look just like your ears. Ooh, it's so freaky, right? Oh, it's so weird. Mushrooms look like ears because they're good for your hearing. Oh my God. Why don't we call our ears hears? I always wondered that. Could we just call them hears? <laughs> my hears are ringing. What? I hear ringing. My hears are ringing. It just it makes more sense to me. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So mushrooms are good for your ears because of the vitamin D content. And vitamin D is good for all bones, in especially the small bones in your ears. Also, what I learned is that mushrooms, don't they look like the, the joints at the end of your leg bones? Well, they are also good for that because it's good for your bones. Vitamin D, good for your bones. I prefer to get mine by staring directly into the sun. I mean, wait, not with my eyes, just with my face, with my eyes closed. <laughs> Don't ever stare directly into the sun, kids. Safety first. <laughs> Number 15, olives. Olives. Olives help your ovaries. They look like ovaries, don't they? Olives contain vitamin A and vitamin E, obviously, and olive oil, which is very good for your body, lubricates your joints and everything. But olives look like ovaries, and they're very good for your reproductive system. So, yay, olives. They're probably 
also good for people with testicles as well. Because don't they kind of look like testicles as well? Yeah, hopefully your testicles are bigger than olives, but, um... (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, so many jokes. So inappropriate. So little time. (laughs) And that leads me to number 16 on the list. (laughs) <laughs> I can't even say it Oh god I'm gonna die <laughs> Bananas <laughs> And you know Bananas are curved like your <laughs> Your smile <laughs> Oh, your mind was so in the gutter after the talk of olives. <laughs> I say to myself as well as you, listener. <laughs> Did I get you? Okay. Bananas are curved like your smile. Because guess what? <laughs> Just like your you know what? It contains... <laughs> Tryptophan, which is converted into serotonin, which is your happiness chemical. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of related to uh, figs there, right? <laughs> your secret happiness hormone is contained in bananas. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty awesome, right? No, it's actually, I didn't know that tryptophan is actually converted into serotonin. So, and it makes you happy. That's why when people eat so much turkey and the tryptophan makes them sleepy, they are also very happy. And did you guys notice it's really weird? It's like this weird phenomenon at Thanksgiving. If you're from the United States, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone gets all antsy and feisty and they fight with each other and they argue and what well, maybe it was only my family, but I don't think so because we're not allowed to eat. Our hands get slapped when we're little kids. We're trying to eat before noon or two in the afternoon. And then usually between two and four, we eat the Thanksgiving meal after we haven't eaten all freaking day long. And then after that, we're all happy because we just like... We were denied food the whole day. Our blood sugar is all screwed up. And then we get to that and then boom, we're automatically supposed to be thankful. Yeah, we're thankful. We're finally getting a freaking eat. <laughs> it's like the first thing. And then after that, we get all blissed out on the tryptophan and then that gets converted to serotonin. What? And then we're all so happy with leftovers, right? We eat leftovers for like a week. You know, sometimes if you can afford it, you buy a bigger turkey, so you eat leftovers for two weeks. For me, I was I would chop the turkey into little little tiny bits so I could and then I'd freeze it and I'd have turkey tacos for weeks after. I I just yeah, I kind of miss turkey actually. We have turkey here in Ecuador, but it's not as it's extremely expensive. It's not as common. I went to buy a turkey at Thanksgiving last year. Uh, a little turkey, a little tiny, like, I don't know, 10 pound turkey, not a very big turkey, 50 or $60. A bigger turkey was like 70 or $80. I mean like a 20 pound turkey. It was like 70, 80 bucks. Can you believe that? I mean, you buy a hundred dollars worth of groceries at Walmart and you get a turkey free, you know, or you buy a turkey for 20 bucks there. You know, a big one is like twenty six to thirty two dollars at Walmart. I remember, because I made I made Thanksgiving dinner every single year for thirteen years when I was married, and even after when I had my kids, um, when I was just a single mom. You know, I mean, I've made a lot of Thanksgiving turkeys in my day. I can't believe I couldn't even. I, I just looked at my kid. I'm all. Um, we're probably just going to buy like a chicken. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so sorry. I think that there was stovetop stuffing that I didn't buy because I was just disgusted with the fact that I couldn't afford a turkey. But I did make cranberry sauce out of um, red fruits and I mixed honey in it. 
and um, I don't know. I just I, I came I came up with fruits that kind of tasted like cranberries down here, and I mixed them all together. And sometimes you can get cranberries here, but they're different. They're different species. They grow on bushes. They don't grow in bogs in Oregon. Did you guys know that cranberries grow underneath water? Totally freaky, right? Most people don't know that. Okay, so. <laughs> Ooh, back to banana. Banana. Beethoven's favorite fruit. <laughs> so bananas are curved like your <laughs> smile. It contains tryptophan, which converts into serotonin, which increases your levels of happiness. Also, bananas contain potassium, and this is a mood regulator in your brain. The happy chemical is your mood regulator, but also the potassium is good for arthritis and joints in your hand and fingers and bananas look like fingers freaky right so freaky so it's good for uh, lowering the risk of joint and muscle degeneration especially in your fingers so it helps with arthritis now chard is number 17 chard is a green leafy vegetable that has bright red veins on the leaves right on it you can't get more clear than that chard is great for circulatory system for your blood for your veins and your arteries keeps them pliable chard has a lot of antioxidants it has um betalin in it betalin and all of this helps to detox your blood and it cleans your blood of free radicals and it helps you to build healthy blood. So pretty weird, right? I mean, it's just so obvious. It's like a freaking roadmap to health. If you just go walking around the vegetable and fruit aisle in the store, especially at the health food store where everything's organic. It's like really freaky to me. All right. The next one is parsley. 18 is parsley. You know, every time you go to Denny's and you order all that unhealthy food, like the hamburgers and the French fries and the milkshake, and on your plate is that disgusting little green thing just hovering there. You're like, what the hell is this? And you usually knock it off the plate. Maybe you don't. I never did. I would eat my parsley. I would eat part of it first, and then I'd eat part of it last. Every single time I ever ate out, my parents are like, why are you eating that parsley? That's weird. Nobody eats a parsley. It's just a garnish. That's what my parents taught me. Ah, it's just a garnish. I mean, they're both dead now, and I love them, but they were both very fat. My stepmom and my dad were pretty fat for like a long time. It's just a garnish. Oh, my God. It's a vegetable. It's edible. If it was poisonous, they wouldn't put it on the plate. It's part of it. You know, for me, I was like, hey, it's it's like a second salad. <laughs> you know, for me, I'm like, hey, I got my other little salad here. It, it, it just always tasted healthy to me. I always wanted the parsley. So parsley has a main branch. It goes out to other branches. It goes out to other branches. And it looks like, well, the neuronal connections in your brain. And guess what? Parsley is very good for your nerves, for your nervous system. It contains high amounts of vitamin C and vitamin K. And it's very therapeutic for your whole nervous system. And not to mention it is a breath freshener. You know, it's good. It's stuff is really good. I love, I honestly, I love parsley. It's got a very distinct flavor to it. I could taste it in my mouth right now, and now I'm like craving it. My body's like, oh yeah. I have a feeling parsley actually probably, as well as, as, as chard, probably has a lot of magnesium. You know, this is not a complete list, by the way, of each of the, each of the uh, foods I'm talking about t- tonight. Um, 
it's not a full list of all the vitamins and minerals in each every each and every individual food. So you can look them up and find out even more. So <clears throat> this is just like kind of a it's kind of an overall you know overall general idea. Just just to get you to start thinking in this way like you, know, you walk through and like, "Oh, look, mangoes. What does that look like?" Well, Again, it kind of looks like the avocado, does it? Doesn't it? It looks like it has a big seed in it, like a baby. I have a feeling that that would be really good if you're pregnant with a baby. And it's also kind of shaped like a heart, depending on the mango species. Probably, probably. Watermelons look like a... I didn't even write this on the list. I should have. Watermelons look like a giant stomach. And when you eat a lot of watermelon, it will help you release water weight that you're probably holding on your stomach. And it has a lot of fiber in it, which will help you release any um, stuff that's stuck on the inside of your colon. Stuck on the inside of your intestines. So watermelon will reduce your stomach if you eat that every single day. My kids and I used to have a a personal watermelon challenge. (laughs) We had a personal watermelon challenge every time the personal watermelons went on sale. And what a personal watermelon challenge is, I bet you can't eat a whole personal watermelon, even though it's called a personal watermelon. You know, the ones are like round, like they're completely round, like a basketball and they're kind of little. It's nearly impossible to eat one in one day. But my kids and I always tried every year and it would usually take us about three days to eat it, but I could eat it. I could eat watermelon every day. I do not ever get sick of it. It tastes so refreshing and so good. My son started making watermelon juice, you know, to <laughs> it's a little bit of a cheat. Well, if I make watermelon juice, I could drink it really fast. It's very, very, very healthy for you. So I didn't even put that one on the list to be honest, but it does look like a big fat stomach and it does help reduce a lot of water weight. And if you, if you need those extra fibers, it helps with that as well. It actually helps what it looks like. (laughs) It's so awesome. I love this so much. Now, 19, so that we'll say, we'll call watermelon like the 18 (laughs) B after parsley. 19 is strawberries. Strawberries. Now, I wonder if they help your tongues because they kind of look like a tongue if you like cut it. But what's really freaky about strawberries, this one's a hidden one, just like the carrots. If you cut a strawberry in half the long way from the the tip of the strawberry to the um, green part, you cut that and you open it up. The white part inside the strawberry looks identical to a tooth with its root. So you got to think about that for a minute. You cut the strawberry open and the white outline of a tooth with, with its root. And that is a clue. And it's also red, like the inside of your mouth. So strawberries are good for oral health of your entire oral cavity. Everything inside your mouth can benefit from strawberries. They whiten your teeth, they strengthen your gums, they strengthen your teeth because of all of the vitamins inside. They're high in antioxidants, they're high in vitamin C. I think they're high in vitamin D, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that one. Strawberries are very, very good for you. They're very good. If you want to whiten your teeth with strawberries, you just rub them on your teeth for like 10 minutes. And by the way, strawberries, the tops, the the green parts of strawberries, the leaves, if you cut them and you dry them and you make them into a tea, it will help you give birth. If you're a woman and you're going to have a baby, the strawberry leaves will help your uterus. And again, strawberries are shaped a little bit like a uterus, like an avocado. And you open it up and there's like a uterus or 
even looks like a vagina inside sometimes. It's good for reproductive health for females as well. And the strawberry leaves make an excellent tea that conditions your uterus as it gets ready to give birth. So again, with the reproductive thing, right? So the next one, number 20 is onions. Onions, when you cut them, they look like cells. And what do onions do? They clear the waste from the body's cells with all the antioxidants that onions have. They uh, have this other stuff. Um, oh, I didn't write it down. It has something else in it that's uh, similar to what garlic has. But garlic has two or three things extra that do the same thing. But anyway, onions are like garlic in the way that it will cleanse your cells. Onions can help you um, get rid of uh, like bacteria and virus in your body and helps helps prevent you from getting sick with the normal stuff like that. But also if you do get sick, there's a couple weird things um, that you can do. If you have an ear infection, you can tape an onion to your ear or put it on there with a scarf or something. Tie an onion to your ear sounds insane, right? But it gets rid of an earache. It's an old, old, old thing from the 1800s. It's in a, the Jethro Cloth's book called Back to Eden. Another thing is if you put onions on the bottom of your feet, they will draw so like put them on the like slice onions put them on your bottom of your feet and you put uh, a sock on at night and that will draw out all of the virus and bacteria we'll just get rid of it all and you're, it'll go through your whole bloodstream and clean out everything not onion rings <laughs> by the way All these things must be eaten raw. Maybe not the oysters. Or do you eat them? Gross. I don't even want to think about that. I don't eat oysters. They look gross to me. But, (laughs) sorry about that. Like, after I recommend you guys eat it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to eat it though. I'm Virgo. I'm not going to. It's too slimy. (laughs) But onions um, are very good for your body. They have the antioxidants that clear all the waste. All the waste away from your cells, which is what they look like. Now, broccoli is number 21 on our list. Broccoli looks like trees. And if you look into the brain, you have little branches and looks like little trees. And it looks like your nervous system. Well, broccoli is good for your nerves. Broccoli contains calcium and vitamin K. And it also balances your sodium levels in your in your body, which is good for blood pressure. And it also prevents osteoporosis. And you notice the, the stem part of the broccoli looks like your spinal column. And it prevents osteoporosis, which is a pain in the spine. <laughs> so, very interesting, right? So, I don't know. That, that's all I, I have to say. I literally gave you 22. 23 if you count black eyed peas which I didn't even look up I wonder if they're not good for your if you have a black eye though I bet they are I bet they're just really good for that I've seen some really freaky freaky vegetables in Peru they have like 2000 plus varieties of potatoes and the potatoes range from <clears throat> the flesh of the potatoes are range from white yellow I think one's kind of orange one of them is white with red streaks in it. One is um, purple. One is white with purple streaks in it. Some of them are blue. Some of them are red. Some of them are pink. These potatoes are so interesting and so good. And there's some tubers that look like a colon. So I have a feeling that they're good for colonic health. It's kind of freaky. And I'm, I've been trying to figure out what the hell kiwis are good for, but I think they're good for testicles as well and ovaries because that's what they look like. You cut them open, though. They're very confusing. <laughs> Maybe they're good for eyes because they are they look like eyes a little bit. I don't know. 
I don't know. When you cut apples sideways, they have a star. The the, uh, seeds make a star pattern. I have a feeling they might connect you to your star chakra, but I don't have proof of that. (laughs) I don't think anyone will. But it was very interesting. I mean, turnips are really good for your ethereal body, and they're very ethereal looking. They're white, and they have these roots. They're long, and they're just weird looking. And then sometimes, like, bok, I think it's bok choy. There's some root vegetables that look like people. And then sometimes they'll look like people with penises or people with, um, like, curvy, like a curvy woman's body. And I wonder if you eat the one that looks like the man, if you're a man, it'll help you more than if you eat the one that looks like a woman. I just wonder about this. Some vegetables literally look like people. It's very, very strange. It's cool, though, when you realize that that's what it's helping. That body part is what's being helped by that. So there's a lot. I I don't know. There's a lot more. I'm sure I could probably find another 21 these are the ones that are most common when you look at articles online. But a few other ones I started thinking of and I looked up and so I added that. Like watermelon, no one really talks about that. But it does, watermelons are notorious for reducing water weight. I love watermelon. Man, I, I like, and when I was in keto, our breakfast, what every morning we had, for the two mornings we were there, we had pineapple, watermelon, papaya, all this was like freshly cut fruit. The first day we had a yellow pineapple and the second day we had a white pineapple. And white pineapples are very sweet and they're lower in acidity. acidity. But I think they have less vitamins too, but I think they have good minerals. And let's see. We had yogurt, we had granola, we had cornflakes it mixed in with our yogurt. Then we had all of our fruit. We had bananas. Ugh, it was so good. I'm trying to think though, papaya I think might be good for sexual reproductive organs. They're filled, filled to the brim with vitamin A. And they kind of look like a, a vagina a little bit, you know, the, sh- the shape of it or a womb, you know. So I think it's a re- reproductive organ fruit. And, um, Chocolate is too. It grows in a pod that looks very much like sex organs. And again, with the happiness factor, the chocolate does bring you um, <laughs> the same hormones as an orgasm. It, it activates the same exact hormones and feelings as if you've had an orgasm. Chocolate is happiness, chocolate is love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So, um, all right. Well, guys, that's all I got to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this a uh, little bit longer episode. Makes up for the two that were about an hour or under an hour this week. I like two or three shorter ones. And tomorrow, we're going to come back with another installment of Khalil Gibran's The Prophet. I hope you're looking forward to that one because I love it. I love The Prophet so much. It's one of my most favorite of all time. It's one of my most favorite books. So I hope you stick around for that. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you took notes, but you don't really have to take notes. You just got to use your mind If you have a hard time with that, eat your walnuts. (laughs) I mean, you know, almonds also look like, uh, almonds are very, very good for male and female reproductive organs. They're very good for ovaries and testicles, and that's what they look like, right? You cut an almond open, it looks like a vagina inside, and they're the shape of testicles as well, a little bit. They're very, very good. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be thinking about this now. If you have a hard time, uh, if you're constipated, 
cashews look like if you line them up, they look like a colon. (laughs) It's really, really freaky. And that's what they help. They also bring about your periods. I don't know how it looks like that or what it, you know. Oh, actually, it's the seed that comes from inside of a flower. And the flower looks like a vagina, I think. I think that's what the deal is there. So I've actually given you like, what now, 25 or 30. (laughs) I've given you about 25 or 30 things that these things look like and that they help. Black eyed peas, I still don't know. I gotta look that one up because that would be hilarious if that's true. They help you with the black eye. (laughs) Okay, guys, I love you. Thank you for being my listeners. Please like, favorite, subscribe, whatever it's called on the podcast player you listen to. But also, turn your friends on to the show. Tell your friends and family and neighbors and anyone you know that have like-mindedness with us. I'm trying to reach all of our spirit, soul, family. And if you want to find me on Twitter, just look up hashtag soul family, hashtag soul tribe. It's going to lead you right to my tweets. Uh, Some of my tweets have been political the past week or two, but most of them are spiritual based. Anyway, send me voice messages to anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. My home base is anchor. That is where I am. So you have to add the app, favorite my podcast, and then that will allow you the ability to send me a voice message. So there we have it. All right, guys, that's all I got to say about that. Again, I love each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for being my listener. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm happy to get all of the messages and various things I've gotten over the past few months. I'm really grateful to know you're out there listening, paying attention, and that you want to reach out to me. So if you do, send me an email at metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com or you could look me up at mermaid girl 888 on Instagram and also Twitter. All right, guys love you so much. Talk to you soon (laughs) tomorrow. In fact, with all unique new programming as usual, but now I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy fifth dimension until next time. Peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.